movies. They're what The Rock does while waiting to become president. And now there's a new contender for best movie ever. For decades, the movie critics have declared Citizen Kane the greatest film of all time, but it is no longer the top-rated film on Rotten Tomatoes, thanks to a newly unearthed Chicago Tribune review from 80 years ago. Mm. The critics said that it fails to impress, with uh, Kane sledding away from the top spot. That title now goes to Paddington 2. That's right. Paddington 2 is now officially the greatest movie of all time. In many ways, it's the Citizen Kane of movies. And look, if you ask me, I don't agree with this whole thing. I don't think you can rank movies based on averaging critical reviews into percentages, you know? I mean, these are works of art. They should be judged on more important factors, like how much money they made. Personally, I think that when you're evaluating films, you need to look at how it stands up to the test of time. You know, Citizen Kane is 80 years old. Will we still be talking about Paddington 2 80 years from now? Probably not. We'll be too busy fighting over the lost fresh water spring on the barren wasteland that'll be planet Earth. Now that's a mock against Paddington. And hey, don't get me wrong. Paddington 2 is a phenomenal movie. I just don't think it's the greatest movie of all time. And I'm not just saying that because I'm bitter over the fact that they cut out my cameo. Why, yes, I will give you a marmalade sandwich, Paddington. But first, you've got to suck my di- Hmm. Huh. Maybe I shouldn't have improvised that line. I don't know. But let's move on now to some crime news. Today, the FBI raided the home and office of Trump lawyer and decaying Stewie Griffin, Rudy Giuliani, where they reportedly confiscated laptops, cell phones, and a bunch of jars labeled definitely not blood. Now, we don't know exactly what Rudy Giuliani is being investigated for. I mean, take your pick, really. But if this next story tells us anything, he'd better hope the feds didn't find any overdue blockbuster rentals. A Texas woman has a felony charge on her record for not returning a VHS tape back in 1999. Karen McBride only learned about the charge after trying to change her last name following her marriage. The VHS tape in question, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Well, she was charged in March of 2000 for felony embezzlement while the movie retail location later went out of business in 2008. The charges have since been dropped after McBride's story aired on local TV. She actually believes her roommate at the time rented it under her name because she never even watched the show. Wow. America loves arresting people. I mean, this woman got charged with a felony for a late videotape return? That's ridiculous. You know who the real criminal is here? The person who invented the system where we were allowed to rent four videos and watch them in a day. You knew full well I couldn't watch those four videos when I took them, but still, you let me take them because you wanted to charge me a late fee. And now look, I have a criminal record. I associate with other criminals, all because I returned the nutty professor four hours late. Still worth it though. You know he played everyone, even the kid. Oof. Oh, and by the way, for our younger viewers, a VHS tape is, um, it's sort of like Netflix, except it only held one show that you wanted to watch instead of 800 shows that you'll never watch. Now, thankfully, they let this woman off the hook. But I do love how even after the charges were dropped, she still threw her roommate under the bus. Yay, I'm free! But you guys need to arrest Deborah because this was all her fault. And finally, dating. It's how you find the person who's going to fart under your covers for the rest of your life. If you like romantic stories about new relationships, well then, you'll love this one 35 times more. From Japan, this man allegedly dated 35 women and told them all he had a different birthday so he could constantly receive gifts from them. He was able to get nearly $1,000 worth of presents from the women before they all banded together to report him to police. He has since been arrested for fraud. Huh. Dating 35 women in Japan is illegal. Weird. In America, they just give you a TV show. And honestly, people, I don't know if getting extra presents is worth the stress of juggling 35 girlfriends. I mean, imagine having to pretend that you hadn't already watched all of Ted Lasso 34 times, so he doesn't know soccer? Oh. Not to mention, he has to be getting gifts for them too, right? I mean, at some point, he's just getting a present from one woman and then handing it right off to the next one. It's basically just an assembly line of re-gifting. 